unfortunately, it's going looks like it's going to be a ton of money and it almost always runs over budget. This is the case where we really need a lot of oversight, like independent oversight. We need to have accountability. We need to have ombuds people that keep an eye on this sort of stuff, an auditor general to look at books. So give you an, an example in, in Ontario, famously around 10 years ago, they signed these ridiculous green energy contracts, right? people suddenly couldn't afford their power bills. They were suddenly not able to keep the lights on. Well, it turns out the Auditor General found that they were overcharged by close to $40 billion for energy they never used. We need some serious answers because now we have all these folks in the city of Calgary that have been living under water restrictions while their property taxes have been going up. While things are stable today, we did detect another wire snap within the feeder main on Sunday afternoon. We remain in stage one outdoor water restrictions. City of Hazard for Rebel News coming to you from Calgary, Alberta, where the latest water main disaster has not only taken six weeks already and counting to maintain and repair, we, we have no end date in sight for when the system will be returned back to normal. Not only that, every day that goes by, it seems like the city is gonna have to spend more and more money, our money, to fix the situation they created. I can tell you the cost for the repairs in, is in the tens of millions of dollars, not larger than that. And so as we've said before, uh, we believe we have contingencies available to cover that. Any long-term rehabilitation plan will be outside of that, medium to long-term rehabilitation plan. As for cost, which I know you and many Calgarians are wanting to know about, we plan to cover all the costs associated with this review through the city's utility sustainment reserve. The Utilities Sustainment Reserve is funded through utility rates. That's why we spoke to the experts at the Canadian Taxpayers Federation to find out where all of our money is going at a municipal level and if it's actually reasonable the things that the mayor has spent our resources on. And how much is this actually going to take before things are returned back to normal? Now, before we talk money, if you want to see our latest reporting on the feeder main situation, the disaster that divulged into the entire city and surrounding area being deprived of water and having water restrictions mandated, well, you got to go to firegondek.com, check out our recent reports, and don't forget while you're there, sign the petition calling for Mayor Jody Gondek to resign so we can find a mayor capable of maintaining the needs of a city. We're obviously standing outside the uh, debt clock that you've brought here to Calgary. That is in a separate report, which I hope you guys will watch as well. But also the topic of, at hand is the water main that broke here in Calgary and the amount of money that's being spent uh, to repair it and the amount of money that the city should have spent on maintaining it. But seemingly that didn't bear any fruit, maybe. And it sounds uh, like they might have been actually spending less over these last few years. Uh, could you just tell us a little bit about Calgary's spending? Yeah, this is a really important issue for so many people because obviously being able to get clean, safe water out of our taps is an essential element in what we expect from municipal level governments. And so number one, I think it's really important for reporters and citizens to go back and take a look at the spending at the city level, say back in 2014. Now, this is just initial looks at the budget. There could be some other explanation to show it. But from first blush, it looks like they were spending more on water maintenance and delivery back in 2014 than they are now in say the 2023 budget. That's kind of weird because the population of Calgary has gone up. So usually you would expect it to kind of stick with the population increase. Um, and certainly with the city's growth, uh, what I can tell you is that um, there's so many, so much growth in, in Calgary that we do have plans for um, additional uh, servicing that would be redundant uh, or would be an additional um, very similar mo movement uh, of water like this pipe. And, and that is on our long range plan. And, and we're actually, because of the city growth, that's advancing that. There could be some capital budget thing where they've moved money around and perhaps they've continued to spend more. But ultimately it drills down to this. City levels of government need to stay in their lane. They're elected to do some pretty simple things like collect waste, fill in potholes, deliver services like clean water and make sure the streets are safe. If you ask most taxpayers at the city hall level what they expect of their city government, they say something like we want the streets clean, safe and in good repair and they want to be able to have water they need to be able to shower they need to be able to wash their dishes the question here is is this caused by mission creep did calgary city hall get too distracted with ideas of saving the world going outside of their jurisdiction into provincial or national or international levels of government and neglect this 
We don't know, but they have got to answer some of these questions. There should be a serious accountability issue here. Well, and from what I've heard, it seems like Mayor Gondick is now going after local taxpayers, the provincial government and the federal government for taxpayer resources. Uh, meanwhile, I see that earlier in, in her time uh, as mayor, she put forward an $87 billion proposal uh, for a budget moving forward for environmental reasons. So how does a situation like this compare from, let's say, Calgary to Edmonton, the two largest cities in Alberta? Uh, how do they stack up to each other? Is Calgary falling behind here? That's a great question. So I took a really hard look at a lot of the spending going on in Edmonton over the last, say, 10 to 15 years. Generally speaking, they're not they're not keeping pace when it comes to things like manpower for cleaning up garbage or policing the streets. But their calm staff, their narrative whittlers that they've exploded. I think it's between like 200 and 300 percent increase in full time positions there compared to what you would often consider essential, like keeping streets safe or clear of garbage, that sort of stuff. And so we need to take these same questions to the City Hall of Calgary and say, hey, look at their books, look at their spending, look at their expenses. Where is this money going? What are you focusing on? How many full-time employees do you have on actual water maintenance? Not promoting water or peddling water or any of the fun politics stuff, the actual engineers of maintaining the water system. Ask those hard questions because we need some serious answers because now we have all these folks in the city of Calgary that have been living under water restrictions while their property taxes have been going up. So it's not Joe and Sally Sixpack's job, okay, to maintain the water system. That's the city's job. The average taxpayer just pays for the stuff and they should be able to expect that while their property taxes are going up, the maintenance is being maintained. Now, how much of this situation, obviously, uh, there's preliminary numbers now that are saying it might be tens of millions of dollars just for the repairs, not for all the maintenance that's going to be required to bring the system back up to 100% operations. How much of that's going to end up on this clock here? Yeah, that's a great question. So the city government, right, does struggle sometimes with be, not being able to run a deficit, okay? A lot of people don't understand that usually, generally speaking, city governments, how do I put this? They kind of serve at the bidding of the province, okay? They, they are not their own entities, okay? That is why the province actually does have a lot of power when it comes to city halls. If you look back in Ontario, for example, there were situations where the entire city government was dissolved by the provincial government. That's how the system works. And so they're not allowed to run gigantic debt, right? But they can hit up the province for more money, right? They can hit up the country for more money at the federal level. At the end of the day, there's one taxpayer. So if you're a taxpayer in Calgary, you are also a provincial taxpayer and you are a federal taxpayer. And if the mayor turns around and hits up Prime Minister Trudeau for this money, it's still coming out of your pocket. Do you have any assessment based on perhaps uh, some of the other stuff you've researched on how much this might end up costing? Unfortunately, it's going looks like it's going to be a ton of money and it almost always runs over budget. This is the case where we really need a lot of oversight, like independent oversight. We need to have accountability. We need to have ombuds people that keep an eye on this sort of stuff, an auditor general to look at books. So give you an, an example in, in Ontario, famously around 10 years ago, they signed these ridiculous green energy contracts, right? People suddenly couldn't afford their power bills. They were suddenly not able to keep the lights on. Well, it turns out the Auditor General found that they were overcharged by close to $40 billion for energy they never used, okay? This really highlights the fact that whenever anything like this happens, like massive water main breaks, number one, we need answers as to how this happened. Where's the accountability? Where was the maintenance? And number two, while you're repairing it, who's keeping an eye on the books there too? And again, this is regardless of ideology or politics. We don't care if it's a red jersey or a blue jersey or a, an orange jersey. We need to have accountability for taxpayers here. In relation to countrywide, uh, what you've looked at so far when it comes to Calgary spending, uh, is it disproportionate? Is it irregular? Uh, is it more than it should be? So this is becoming an increasing problem with cities themselves. Okay, doesn't matter if it's in Alberta or British Columbia, for example. Uh, I will point out it's super weird that the mayor of Calgary is paid more than the premier of the province. Straight up. Same thing in Edmonton. The mayor of Edmonton is paid more than Premier Daniel Smith. 
Now, we don't want politicians getting pay raises, okay? But our point here is that city politicians are getting paid way too much, okay? For the longest time, if you were a city councillor or even a mayor at the city level, it was a part-time job. It was public service. So for the longest time at the city level of government, okay, being a city councillor or even a mayor sometimes was actually a part-time job. You were a retired police officer. You were a retired school teacher. You ran your own shop, your own business, and you wanted to give back to your community. And so you would sit on city council and you would get a stipend, like literally a stipend, like $1,500 a year, something really low, okay? Because you're not depending on this thing for your full-time salary and your full-time job. Fast forward to now, and we have all these folks coming out of university with their degrees in governance and poli sci, and they want these full-time bank jobs at the city level as a city councillor. That was never the deal. That was never the case. They were not supposed to be rolling in it at over $100,000 a year as a city councillor, and now with mayors making more than premiers. So generally speaking, cities across Canada are getting out of control with a few things. Mission creep, so going past keeping the streets safe, clean, and in good repair, and spending, including on themselves and giving themselves pay raises. As we've seen in Calgary. Uh, is there any last words you want to add either on this or on the debt truck we see behind us? I just wanted to encourage everyone. Um, we hear from people a lot, like a lot. And even here in Alberta, where things are generally better, we're close to 50% of people now being within $200 of not being able to make the minimum payments, meaning shelter, food, and minimum payments on like their credit cards. That's really rough. We are hearing from people increasingly desperate. I want to encourage them. This won't last forever. Things will improve and they will improve when we all get off the bench. So you may think your voice doesn't matter and I don't care who you vote for, your voice does matter. I want to encourage everybody, including the taxpayers in Calgary, speak up. Email and phone your local city councillor, email and phone your mayor because that does two things. It lets them know that you're holding them accountable and that's part of our direct democracy. And it also gives you a sense of fellowship and agency. You will feel better because you have stood up and done something. And there's a good chance if you go to city hall meetings, you'll find your tribe. You'll find your people who care about ratepayers associations and taxes and smaller, more accountable government. And so across party lines, I know people are struggling right now. We hear it every single day. So I just want to encourage people, man, just grab that bull by the horns. And while you do that, don't forget to go to firegondek.com, sign the petition calling for Mayor Gondek's resignation. For Rebel News, I'm Sidney Fizard. Don't forget to go to firegondek.com, sign that petition. Enough is enough. We need to hold these people accountable. And the best way for you to do that through Rebel News is to go to firegondek.com and sign the petition calling for her resignation.